a prophet to the nations, I appointed you. Do you think those words were only meant to Jeremiah? Did God only have in mind Jeremiah when he gave him these words? You know, if it's only it was for Jeremiah, then why are we reading them today? What do they mean for us? They have no relevance to us. If everything that's spoken by God in the Bible was meant only to the, time, to the people at that time, to specific individuals or groups of people, then the Bible becomes just a book of history. We're reading and remembering what God said hundreds and thousands of years ago. But we know that's not the case. Because in the gospel, when Jesus proclaims a reading from the Isaiah, the prophet, where it says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. Jesus says, these words are fulfilled in your hearing today. So the word of God that was given to the prophets before Jesus was also meant for Jesus. Because Jesus is the perfect fulfillment of all those pro words, all these prophecies. But not only to Jesus. It's to each one of us at any time, at any place. Sisters and brothers, today God is telling each one of us, I have appointed you a prophet to the nations. Not one nation, to the nations. You and I are called to be prophets. Whether we are young or old, whether you're healthy or sick, we're all called to be prophets. Now, what does that mean to be a prophet? If I say, well, you know, Joe is a prophet. What are you thinking in your mind? What does it Joe does that makes us think he's a prophet? Sometimes we think of prophets as kind of telling the future. And that's part of it. Sometimes we think prophets that have the special knowledge, you know, special wisdom, secret wisdom, they know things. That's part of it. But that's not what God tells Jeremiah and telling us today. A prophet is someone who proclaims what God commanded them to say. A prophet is the mouthpiece of God. And the words that come out from the prophet are not just meant for the prophet or for certain people, but for everyone, because the word of God is a living word. The word of God is what guides us in life, to eternal life. This is what a prophet does. It proclaims what God is asking them to proclaim. And what does God want us to proclaim? Well, it's very simple, really. God is love, right? And all can God communicate is love. That's what we heard in that second reading from St. Paul. God wants us to be loving people, loving children, loving teens, loving adults, loving seniors. But to love as God reveals to us through the prophets, and especially through Jesus Christ, the true meaning of love. The word tells us love is like a feeling. If you feel good, then, you know, you love something. If you're eating food and you feel good, oh, then you love that food. The word tells us love is all about yourself, fulfilling your needs. Love is tell us that, you know, you are the center of the universe. Everybody should be there to help you feel good and do whatever you want to. That's not the way God loves us. St. Paul tells us love is being patient, is being kind, is being forgiving. Love is about living the truth of God. Love is not about being jealous, but being grateful to the blessings that we have. That's the love that God calls us to, and a love that has no boundaries. It's not limited to certain people, to our own family, to our friends, to our co-workers, our students, fellow students. A love that has no boundaries. And that's why Jesus talks about Syrian, the Naaman, and the widow of Sidon. These were pagans. And yet, out of all the widows in Israel, God's people, God's community, out of all the lepers in Israel, 
God chose two pagans to receive the blessings of God. Naaman the leper was healed, and the widow of Sidon, during a famine, she only had one more cup of flour for her to bake for herself and her son and make a loaf of bread. And Elijah told her, make me a loaf first, and then you'll have enough to eat. And she trusted those words. Just imagine, you only have one loaf of bread to eat, and then you got to die from hunger, and somebody tells you, no, feed me first. And she said, yes. And they ate for a whole year. Her sack of flour never got empty, and her jug of oil never ran dry. Love means faith, trust, trusting in God. And that's why the people in you know, the synagogue kind of turn on Jesus when he challenges them to go beyond themselves. Don't expect that he's going to treat them in a special way because they're his family and friends. But that he came to be a prophet to all nations, Jews and Gentiles, pagans and Greeks, to everyone. And so must our love be. And we need to be the prophets proclaiming that message of love. We need to be prophets of love, challenging ourselves and those around us to include more and more people in the circle of love that we surround ourselves with, to proclaim God's love and how to live that love. And we know that's not easy. That's difficult. And God tells us, he told Jeremiah, People are going to reject you. And they rejected Jeremiah. They tried to kill him. They rejected Jesus. As we just heard, they were trying to kill him. But God makes another promise. I will not let them crush you. I will be with you. And that's where the faith comes in. Is it risky to live those commandments of love that God has given us? to be prophets in a world that sees love in totally different ways? Yes, it is risky. It's dangerous. But do we trust the word of God that he is with us and he won't let the world conquer us or crush us? That's where the faith comes in and the hope that God's word will be true for us so we can live that love. As I mentioned in the beginning of Mass today, we celebrate Catholic Schools Week. And we're blessed to have with us many family, school families, many students, some of them wear your uniforms. I hope you get like a free dress day during the school week or something special, right? <laughs> but also I want to thank all of you for supporting our Catholic school, a Catholic, Catholic Holy Family Catholic School. Whether your parents, students, teachers, staff, and whether you're parishioners. Because it's we all one community, and it takes all of us to support Catholic schools. How many of you went to Catholic schools or sent your kids to Catholic schools? Raise your hands. All right, wonderful. Let's give them a round of applause. And it is a sacrifice to send your children to a Catholic school, you know? You have to pay tuition. But it's worth it. And that's why, parents, you're making those sacrifices. Because you know it's worth the investment in the future of your children. See, parents in, you know, choose Catholic schools for many reasons. Some of them choose the school because they're smaller, you know, low, lower enrollment, so everybody gets to know each other. It's a nice community. Some of them use it for the academic you know, programs they have. Some of them use, use it for safety and security in this world today. But really, the purpose of Catholic schools, or the treasure that Catholic schools offers to our children, is to help them to know who they are. To teach them that there is a God who knew them even before they existed in the womb of their mothers, who dedicated them, gave them a purpose, a mission, even before they were born. A God who wants them to be prophets, to go and change the world through the word of God, through their faith, through the way they live the message of God, the message of love, how they love others, and how they guide the world to love. 
It's not just about helping them to grow physically and academically and spiritually, emotionally, but also it develops that spiritual dimension that all of us have. And a lot of times, we don't de develop and help to grow from being one of a child to being an adult, as St. Paul tells us. It's about showing them the way to eternal life one day. And through that message of love, to be able to change the world that we live in. This is the treasure of Catholic schools and Catholic education, is expanding the horizons of these children to realize there's more than this world. There's more to do what just one person can do. It's what you can do when you walk with God, and God is there to help you and to guide you. So thank you for choosing Catholic schools and supporting Catholic schools. Some of you maybe went to school here and some of the teachers are still here. I encourage you this week, all of us first, to pray for our Catholic school community here at Holy Family. But those of you who went to school here and your teachers are still here, maybe drop them a note and thank them for their sacrifices too for being part of the Catholic school. They make sacrifices also, as you know. Their dedication, their commitment, the hours they work beyond what they're called to do, the love for these children and the way they model that love for them. We all owe a great gratitude, you know, debt of gratitude to all those who have been invested and shared their lives in Catholic education for the sake of our children and all of us here. So today, this week, let us keep them in our prayers so they can continue to fulfill their mission. But also let us pray for ourselves that we will be willing to be prophets of God, prophets of love, not afraid to proclaim the message of love. Because as St. Paul tells us, love conquers all, even death.